good morning. I am Tanivita Moses and for today I will be taking you through a management of hospitality centers and our broader topics are going to be in reference to safety, security and health. Those are cornerstones for hospitality management because if those are the ones that are going to keep your clients away, then I am afraid your hotel will not be competing just like the others. So in this particular unit or this segment for today, we shall interest ourselves and also get into best practices of safety and security and we shall have a case study of the touch um, on radio hotels in Mumbai because India and Uganda of course have a lot in common and um, security departments of the hotel we shall also talk about guidelines for security in hotels dealing with of course various emergencies the likes of which is a fire dealing with death in the event a client dies in the facility or dealing with a crisis dealing with a disaster then we shall also delve into the significance of safety and security and then we will have of course a bigger discussion going all around. Um, for introduction purposes, I am a lecturer in the School of Sciences and I've also been doing since 2011. So safety and security is the major concern among all living creatures of this universe. It is also described by Marshall through his need and hierarchy field. The safety and security does not confine to life only, but it also emphasizes on job, health and the environment. So when we think of safety and security, especially in the hotels, automatically it comes on the parts of tourists. As we know, tourism is a recreational activity in which a tourist leaves his home or their home to a distant place. And safety and security is a major challenge for him to come. At this new and unfamiliar place, he or she has to stay somewhere so that he or she can feel safe. That some short of means of shelter is required to keep himself herself safe from unforeseen circumstances. The motto of hospitality industry emphasizes that guest is God and the God should be provided safety and security. The guests coming to the hotel must be given the safety and security environment so that they are staying must be comfortable and enjoyable and overall the hotels are gaining monetary benefit from these particular guests. It is the moral and ethical responsibility of the hotels to provide guests from any mishap leading to their death and loss of baggage. The hotels are always aware that if they fail in providing safety and security to guests, the bad reputation tag will be tagged and it will affect their business in many folds and facets. So it has also been seen that hotels keep on hiding the information of some eminent persons, of very, very important persons that they call VVIPs, including celebrities, movement in their premises because it will create chaos and hamper the smooth functioning of the hotel. It is a good practice to not disclose the identity of some persons and hotels are doing just that to provide such a guest an environment where such persons can feel safe and secure. Besides, even the celebrities who are used to the limelight when they come to a particular hotel for a private life, they don't want to attract so much attention to themselves and it's not in your best interest that you so do because that will inconvenience create a hassle hustle of or a stampede and then your other clients for whom you ought to provide equal treatment will feel discriminated against. So hotels are putting a lot of efforts in curbing terror attacks 
and crimes by keeping an eye over suspected guests through various tools and technologies and also helpful in the preventing of other casualties caused due to, to nature. The ambience of the hotels itself describes that the hotel is very much concerned about the safety and security of not only the guests but also their belongings as well. It is observed that safety and security concern is not limited to the guest only but yes, it has been extended beyond it. It also encompasses the hotel employees, the property, the tangible and intangible assets which are helpful in making the stay of all these guys, friends, guests, clientele for that matter, pleasant. However, the value of a hotel is estimated by its assets and that's why the safety and security concern other than guests are highly required by the hotels. The word safety and security are used together but it has literary differences too. Safety has been defined as a condition in which a person is being protected from harm caused by unintentional failure when security is defined as a condition in which a person is being protected from harms caused due to intentional human behavior or actions. So in the present unit, we will be discussing about the relevance of safety and security in the hotel industry along with the case studies of various hotel chains. So after going through this um, session, it is the intent of the course facilitator that we understand safety, security and its types and significance. And then also we have knowledge about the best practices of security and safety in hospitality industry. And then also we understand the term emergency and the ways to deal with different emergent situations. Now, I would, um, of course, give you case examples. Um, I hope it is still fresh in your minds on the eve of a new year. Organizers of Freedom City were accosted with a stampede where people were rushing to watch the um, the opening up of the new year and there were fires that were flaring in the night. The organizers of the event, which was an, an old age inclusive event, unfortunately the old event, the old age event had degenerated or had gone beyond the required time for children. So when fireworks were hard and then everybody ran and forgot that their children and this, this, the doors were small and not expensive enough, they were death. That was recorded. The organizers were arrested, prosecuted, and that of course left a dent or a bad name to the facility because the OC of the police station that needed to have given the needed security that would have expected the place was also arrested. The managers, the organizers and the proprietors also found themselves interacting with police and they didn't need that bad media. So the hotels, in order to fulfill their safety and security needs, have implemented proper safety and security systems to protect their employees, guests, and their belongings, tangible assets such as artifacts and deco, equipment and appliances, raw materials, grocery items, and goods by tying to various departments like production, homekeeping, and front office along with intangible assets like gardens and surroundings. So the incident of the 26-11 terror attack at Taj Hotel and Umbriello Hotel in Mumbai was an eye-opener 
like the case I've given of uh, what happened in uh, at Freedom City, but also terror attacks were visited on on hospitality places like Kyandondo Rugby Club and the Ethiopian village in Kabalakala when Uganda suffered the two twin bombings. So that, of course, was a threat or a security concern. So what happened? Or rather, when all this happened, subsequently hotels or such providers that have kept their guard down find themselves now trying to up their game. But it's important that they always keep this in their watch. So many of us who were earlier advocating the privacy of guests did not allow the scanning and fixing of guests and condoning of guest rooms in some cases only. After this terror strike, the Chandon Rugby Club, the Kabalagala Ethiopian village, then it became okay that security concerns, or even checking the luggage and baggage of guests, became very important. So after these terror strikes, almost all the popular hotels reviewed their safety and security systems to cope up with any similar situation likely to happen in the near future. The personnel from defense services were also empowered for their expert advice and suggestions. However, the success of safety and security lies in the fact that everyone, that is to say employees and guests, should adhere with policies, procedures, strict regulations and rules because this ensures that all of them are safe. And instructions provided by the hotel from time to time ought to be respected. So the Taj Hotel, Mumbai, um, Chabon, Chandon Rugby Club, the Ethiopian village review who are required or then became case studies for which the hotels would subsequently be required to risk assess on regular interval to incorporate and update their safety management features. Safety communities, rather safety committees, safety committees are now an integral part of management and audits of the same. So prefix of hotel staff and management top and uh, middle and bottom is key. The officers of the hotel are incorporated with safety and security features which are in the pattern of latest industry trends and regulatory requirements that now in every hotel group we put contacts of security uh, officials who if any of either staff or guest so anything suspicious that they now have calls that they can call over and above those for fire over and above those for health so in order to achieve its objectives the, the Taj Hotel the Mumbai often organizes safety awareness programs workshops and safety weeks in cooperation with independent safety experts the Taj group of hotels has conferred an award to its hotel for coping rather opting and performing best in safety aspects. So the case studies I'm giving are an embodiment of the need going forward to ensure that hotel facilities secure their places. And of course they have metal detectors that never used to be the case. Now every to whichever hotel you go to now it is routine that you pass through a metal detector or a bonus screen because you never know a security a guest can be a security threat or can be a drug threat, could be trafficking in drugs. 
So if need be, the dog squad is also invested. Invested in the hotel to prevent any mishap caused due to improvised weapons. The hotel also gives emphasis on organizing awareness problems, especially for the hotel guests and employees. So it is important in the briefings when you are telling the guest your rules and regulations or what the guest will be entitled to, then it is incumbent to also use that opportunity to tell them about the security measures. And also um, the fire escape, when you're telling them that this is perhaps the fire escape and all those kind, it is now prudent, okay. And hotels now have invested in CCTV cameras of high quality and security personnel are constantly watching the movements of each guest and their behavior. The Taj Hotel has opted for floor security. Under this system, the guest is supposed to access those areas for which he or she is entitled. Like if the guest room lies on the third floor, the lift will stop at its designated floor only, and thus the guest's movement can be restricted to its floor. Every room has been placed with safety procedure cards, also known as corridor cards, indicating do's and don'ts to be followed during in emergency circumstances. In case of vehicles approaching towards Taj Hotel, all the vehicles have to pass through a barrier which is under control by the hotel's own security personnel who are trained in how to be polite, how to be conscious, but also be professional in dealing with guests and also staff because staff can also be an entry point for which uh, the unwanted guests who want to cause mayhem or take advantage of. So security and safety are in tandem as defined above because being safe and being secure is an embodiment of what would make a good hotel. So security departments of hotels. One of the most important aspects that talks about customer satisfaction in the hospitality industry is security. The security department of a hotel is held responsible for protecting guests and their luggage. Employees and staff of the hotel, hotel equipment, raw materials, groceries, and other resources of daily use and fund protection. This department provides safeguards to the movable and the movable properties pertaining to a hotel. This department closely works with the room division and provides training to staff members of the hotel to fight against any emergency situation. This department is also responsible for maintaining hotel information technology systems that includes all surveillance systems installed in the hotel premises. They guard and keep an eye over every movement that is happening in and around the hotel through these CCTVs. The functioning of security departments of the hotel is based on the size and structure of the hotel. The five-star properties have a provision of either security head or individual aid. Security head is appointed by the human resource department, while individual head is appointed by the hotel management directly. Security head stroke individual head is assisted by four security personnel who are addressed as shift in charge. They take care of the movements of every shift, that is in the morning, evening, and night. The job role of these security personnel are widespread that is more complex in under their supervision. They cover mainly entrance, gate, standing areas, digital room, recording, security supervision cabin of the front area of the hotel, the back area like the entrance gate for hotel staff and they are frisking receiving mobile handsets from each one and issuing tokens. Distributing vehicle passes to the hotel staffs are also done by them. They also assist in procuring consumable materials supplied to the hotel. It is responsibility of this department to receive such items and put entry into the entry register duly signed by date and timings. The security personnel are 
also liable for issuing get passes and their damage items from non functional items which are being carried out on the water from the tires of these kind of purposes. Of course, it is important for us to ask ourselves what do we mean by security? I invite you to also write down the major steps that are taken by hotels to improve their host security systems. Now, it is also important for us to talk about guidelines for security in hotel. Now, a hotel must focus on providing safety to its employees, guests and their valuables. Hotel equipment, protection of hotel resources and fan protection. It is the responsibility of the hotels to keep on reviewing their safety and security measures and update them accordingly. Through the guidelines for security in hotels, vary rather although the guidelines for security in hotels vary from country to country and China to China, but their common agenda is to provide an ambience where all key players of the hotel component must feel safe and secure. The major guidelines, as I'm going to discuss, include, but are not limited to, regarding guests and their valuables. Valuables. The guests should be protected from the crimes like murder, killing, abduction, threat from hotel staff or outsiders should be provided with hygienic and fresh food and drinking water. The guest room should be ensured safe and protected by logging system. The added advantages of this type of doors are that they are supported by electronic devices controlled by the smart cards and magnetic strips. It enables the hotel to know at what time the guest checked in the room and at what time. The guest is also supplied in room cells that are operated by key cards. Even some of the smart safes are equipped with biometric configuration that uses thumb impression or retina scan to open it. The second is regarding its employees. The backbone of every hotel is its employees and it is their moral responsibility of the hotels to take care of its employees, to provide them with a terror-free working environment. The hotel management must focus on deputing, rather deputizing security personnel at all the strategic locations. Entry points, scanning areas, staff entry gate, installation of CCTV cameras. They should also be given staff lockers insurance, free pickups and drop facilities, health systems and many employee-oriented benefits. The case in point is during COVID, employees for hotels where public transport was banned in the night needed to safely travel from their homes to their workstations and back. They also needed to be protected through being uh, immunized against COVID but also given protective gear so that they felt safe while they discharged that noble and frontline work which was very rare. So they should also be given or rather provided with water guard drinking water training and mock drills over firefighting equipment, evacuation process during emergency situations. The hotel employees of every functional department must maintain the dress code as per industry requirement. If employees felt unsafe, there would be any service provided and that ultimately translates to failure at work. So the other is regarding hotel equipment. So the guidelines must also speak to what happens to the hotel equipment? The delivery department, the delivery part of the hotel operations is dealt by the equipment and as it is, it needs us 
utmost requirement to take care of these machines. The major technologies used in the hotels are in the form of lifts and broilers and the instruments used in the kitchen for production are technologically best and the movable and immovable assets of the hotel like furniture and hotel complex must be protected against fire, floods, earthquake and bombs. The hotel management must ensure that there are proper safety and security devices installed in the hotel that can allow the staff well enough in advance to prevent any damage to the hotel. Regarding protection of hotel resources, the hotel administration ensures the contamination free storage of all the perishables and non perishable foodstuffs. The whole hotel complex should be treated with proper pest control mechanisms. Imagine a client coming into a hotel and seeing a rat, a mice, or a cockroach, or fleas. The hotel administration may also deploy security personnel for keeping all the records of in-house supply. Regarding fund protection, funds are very crucial for any hotel and it must be it must be handled with special care. The hotel makes a policy to put cash at a safe place where limited people can access and after every shift all the cash is kept under tight security by 24 7 CCT camera monitor. The hotel makes a policy that only one employee confidential should be held responsible for accessing cash bank. All the entries pertaining to transactions must be done immediately. The person in charge receiving cash should close the cash drawer after, it, after every transaction. In some of the five star properties, automatic lock is installed in the cash box that acts by biometrics for every transaction. However, certain hotels have a policy of surprise audit of the cash register in the front office and it is done by the personnel from the accounting section with the prior permission of the hotel management authorities. Other than above discussed guidelines, there are other guidelines that are equally important and directly contributing to maintaining security in hotels. These are certain hotels have established defibrillation centers in which all premises in collaboration with police and where heart attack guests can be provided emergency help. So for instance, a hotel has a, an in-house health worker who attends to emergencies either of guests or of employees with the sole purpose of giving them first aid and also that they have a, a blood bank, mini blood bank, or they also have a, a health facility on call or even an ambulance. Elevators have been installed specifically for guests staying in designated floors. No other than guests are supposed to use it. So you, you see that um, uh, sections for where guests are to access are exclusively for those guests. Or that any guest or extra is supposed to be registered. So the hotels have made it mandatory for its employees to wear photo identification cards provided by hotel management during their duty hours. Some hotels also maintain emergency manuals to help guests during emergency situations. Big hotels also maintain an emergency power backup to provide uninterrupted power to the hotels when it is needed. Imagine you have Imagine all your rooms can only be accessed by lift and you don't have a standby generator. The big properties have installed smoke detectors and fire alarms in its every guest room, the entire complex and at every floor. It will enable the quick response team to identify and respond to that particular place and area for quick action. Now that there is the tobacco control act in Uganda, hotel facilities can enforce it by including smoke detectors over and above um, putting no smoking notices. All hotels are 
public places which are 100% smoke free environment. Dealing with violence, emergency situations is also another case I interest myself in talking about. So as we know, emergency situation occurs without our estimation or anticipation. We may confront it at any point of time with multiple forms. The emergency situations are always challengeable and many times it attracts loss of human life and property. The preparedness in fighting against all these emergency situations may minimize its impact on health and wealth. The organizations who peep into the future and plan accordingly may overcome emergency situations. Like this, fire is a common hazard which is confronted by almost every building. But the advanced preparation of organizations may minimize its impact on health and wealth. The case in point is that you have a water hydrant so that trucks for fire brigade that are coming to your rescue, they don't have to waste time trying to fill into themselves with water. All they need is the nozzle to come and just tap into the water hydrant. And it's important that all the prices be enabled with such. Dealing with fire, the waters are no exceptions in confronting emergency situations. Similar to other buildings or public places, hotels are also prone to the risk of fire. But fire in other buildings and fire hotels make a big difference in terms of people's property. Being sensitive against fire, the hotels are always at stake, leading to the threat of guest and host. The major causes of fire in hotels are due to smoking, short circuits, gas leaks, open flames, and flammable grease, combustible waste, and fault in the vector shafts. I paid a visit at Golf Coast Hotel, and then uh, when it comes out, the lift goes to the challenge. And when I tried to I thought it would sense my heart that it had become very uh, before rather fault. I nearly lost my hand. My colleague actually lost his wristwatch because he was bound by the door. So when such um, lift faults happen, please stay calm, relax. Don't move until the invention of the door has formally opened. It's not opening and locking, opening and locking. And then jump out. So the major causes of fire, as I have already enumerated, are as such. The hotels can prevent the fire by adopting certain safety measures. Like smoking should be prohibited. I said it's already prohibited under the law and should not be allowed at all in the Uganda case because the Tobacco Control Act bans public places and says 15 meters away from public places, work, work, work places and public means of transport. So the cigarette parts and cigarette, uh, live cigarettes should be properly disposed of. But in the Uganda case, they are not allowed. The hotel administration must ensure that the ash trees are not available to consumers because Section 12 of our Tobacco Control Act bans public places providing ash trees. So the short circuits can be checked in hotels by regularly inspecting electronic appliances and identifying the loose wires, poorly fitted electronic devices, and insulators. These potential hazards must be brought into the notice of the concerned department and remedial action must be taken in prior basis, but routine is what I recommend. 
The functional development also ensures that none of the electric devices are kept on, mod, and after using the appliances, it is placed at its space. Case in point, a client may forget a hot flat iron on and it causes trouble. So to check the fire cause the chip to gas leakage, the cylinders are placed outside the kitchen area and the production managers or supervisors physically monitor the activities in the kitchen. The supervisor in the kitchen also ensures that deep cleaning of the kitchen appliances like chimneys, exhausts, grills, ventilators, and many others must be done on a regular basis. The elevator shafts must be greased properly. And so are the stair, are the, the staircases. However, there are certain strict code of conduct and guidelines from National Building Code, or rather the construction, uh, car, uh, construction um, associations and the public health inspectors would require the same because all light hotels are given what are called occupational permits. So providing training to its employees regarding rising and alarm during fire, use of first aid kit and tackling firefighting gadgets also will make them familiar with evacuation plan and entrusting them their individual role during any emergency situation is also key. The hotel administration will deploy a person to call fire services during emergencies and will also guide firemen to specific location. The hotel administration will take care of all the safety measures on daily basis and ensure that all the escape routes are open. Housekeeping is doing its job and there is no scope of any hazard situation is also required. The hotel management will also ensure that testing, inspecting and maintenance of works is going on to avert any hazard situation in the near future. The hotel administration will assign strategic locations to install firefighting equipment in accordance with the law. A letter depicting what work permit or work permit is required from either the fire office or security officers and also the contractor who is about to work in the court. The hotel management or administration will also ensure that the display items used for the call through our water as class one friend spread rating and won't produce harmful gases or burning. Such items should not be placed in positions where it may lead to create obstacles during evacuation or exit process. May hide any important notice or sign of obstruction may be done or pass it. So the reflecting miners, rather mirrors, stock objects should not be used in places where which are supposed to be used during the emergency situation to avoid any confusion. The mattresses used to cover staircases and floors should be ensured that they are not slippery and stuck tightly. So the division of the guests on each floor should be in the manners of 60 40 ratio, that is 60% occupied and 40% kept reserved. The less number of help authorities during evacuation processes. So the center lies into the hands of the guests as well. The hotel management is supposed to take all the pain to cut out emergency situations caused due to fire. But sometimes the role of guests are equally important in overcoming any unforeseeable situations. As soon as the guest arrives in the hotel, it is expected that he she must take a look on their floor, the floor plan and the evacuation routes, staircases exit and emergency exit gates, nearby fire alarm and also go through the manual provided in the room. During the fire situation, leave and close the door of the room. Sound the alarm and proceed towards staircases, stroke emergency exit gates and it is advisable that avoid using the elevator. It has been seen that major fatalities have been caused due to smoke inhalation. Some certain tips can help guests out in minimizing the death tolls. 
During the fire, the nets can crawl on the floor and put out water and put water soaked clothes on the top. This process will check smokes to come out from the fire area. Hotel fire can also be checked if the guests will not use beds, sofas and other places as a means of comfort to enjoy smoking. These areas where the smoldering bats cannot be traced easily. So while leaving and checking out from the room, a small inspection can avoid fire event. Also, it is assumed that the guest will not dump ashes directly into the waste basket and never use any other appliances other than they are provided for. Now, an emergency dealing with death as an emergency. Death is an inevitable truth of this world. Anyone may die at any place and at any moment, whether it is at workplace, home, travel, playing, or joy, or even holidaying, no matter what. The major reasons for the death in hotel are caused due to drug abuse or suicide. There are few deaths that have been reported by hotels and later causes of such deaths are due to heart failure. But of course, bathrooms. The hotels generally follow certain guidelines divided into these categories, preserving the symbol for police investigations by the hotels. Hotel authorities safeguard the guest personal belongings and remove removal of the body and cleaning up the process of the guest room while handling with the dead guest. The details of handling procedures is as follows. While declaring the guest dead, make sure he is not asleep or in a state of consciousness. After analyzing the vital signs and in such case should be immediately reported to the front office manager through front desk and the front officer manager will bring the mishap into the notice of the general manager or the resident manager. In some cases, security manager is also informed. The general manager or resident manager or security officer will inform the local police station and simultaneously the hotel doctor is also called upon who will check, verify and put the confirmation in there. After receiving the confirmation from the doctor, the details of the disease, like home address, rather than the deceased, like home address, contact numbers, and many others are retrieved, and the information is shared with the descendants of the deceased by the hotel. The police, after doing all the formalities, asking the hotel administration to remove the dead body with the help of the corona and lock and seal the room for further forensic investigations, if any are required. The dead body will be fully covered and will be carried through a stretcher. In this process, the service elevator will be used rather than the guest elevator. The hotel administration must collect the death certificate from the doctor. The hotel administration will prepare a list that will depict the information, like the person who reported the case, date, and time, date, and time of checkout, that was checking into the hotel by the deceased, and known with room number, date, time, and reason of death. A proper list will also be prepared by the hotel, which will have the details of the belongings and luggage possession, possessed by the guest. The luggage of the deceased person will then be shifted to the luggage room, and the concerned who is dealing with all these exercises will sign on all the documents as evidence. So far as the booking of such a room where any death has been covered is concerned, it is the responsibility of the hotel administration to request for a clearance letter from the police department. After receiving that from the competent authority, the room will be opened and treated with chemicals to disinfect and sanitize it. And with the permission of the general manager, room manager, the room will be open for further booking. Dealing with the crisis, as we know, tourism and hotel are interlinked, and if there is any disturbance into tourism traffic movement, it will affect hotel as well. In general terms, we may define crisis as an occurrence of any threat that hampers the smooth operation of the tourism industry. It is damaging 
the reputation of the destination in terms of safety, security, comfort, attractiveness by spreading the negativity into the minds of tourists causing a downturn in rather downturn in the economy. As there will be a declination, declination into the tourist arrival and the expenditure pattern, it will lead towards the unemployment and crisis in all the segments of the tourism sector. Whether it is travel agency hotels, tour operators, destination management company, souvenir shops, owners, restaurants, operators, everywhere, there will be a turmoil. Condition and the question of survival will emerge. The major form of crisis that is often confronted by tourism and water are natural calamity, economic slump, rising prices, that is tax living, epidemic and pandemic, tourist activities, violence over the nation caused due to political instability, lockdown imposed to prevent spreading of pandemic, misdeeds by staff and management, negative reviews of the destination of hotels and consumer and customer dissatisfaction. The crisis is not an everlasting event that it will be removed and once again the movement of the tourism industry and other secondary and tertiary affiliations will still flourish. Rather will start flourishing. The biggest challenge in front of hotel industry is to reacting and coping up with the situation. The hotels need to establish relations with the locals, that is to say, local government administration, police, firemen, environmentalists, non cooperative NGOs, cyber crime department, and the banking sector. The environmentalists will suggest hoteliers to comply with strict norms, while, for instance, um, NGOs like We Are at Work who are advocating for the implementation of the tobacco control will give um, outlets to compliant and non-compliant will be given a great action and that of course will impact on how the hotels work and deal with their clients. So it's important that we create good working relations and see that because they will also find complaints with that institutions that are giving you licenses, that are going to give you the stars, that are going to claim that you provide the service or don't. Compromise with certain things can also lead to overcome a crisis, as there are certain problems who are strict with their no pet please policy. But due to the law tourism movement, they relax the policy to motivate this intended to stay in the hotel along with their pets. Hotels often rather offer special incentives to attract travelers like pay for four nights and get one night additional free with discount coupons to redeem during happy hours or casino coupons to play over casinos in the hotels. During the power outage, the hotel may request all the guests to check out simultaneously. It may also request for blackout party, those who want to stay. The hotel administration can also create a corpus with funds provided by themselves and they can also ask for a compulsory contribution from every employee as well. This must have a crisis to clear no while utilizing during crisis. If the employees and their families Family members are protected that the hotel will be in a position to add profit. The hotel administration can also take the help of technologies to cope up with the crisis. The technological advancement will ensure or enhance the quality of the security of the hotel. Establishing communication with guests, those who have been served in the past, it will help the hotel administration to establish a customer relation and efforts should be converting them into their customers. The record keeping is a healthy exercise that can be used for future reference as well. The guest who stayed in the hotel long back may seek any information pertaining to his or her stay, food sound, food preparation process and many more at any point of time. So the customer will be delighted 
if as per guest history records, the hotel management will offer the services to him. That is to say the choice of the meal and the type of room, any special requirements and many others. The case in point I can give is I went to the hotel in Panama. I gave my passport and I was shocked. In the evening when I came back, I found a letter and uh, a plate covered, wanted to see the one had a birthday. It had a time on that day that I was not in impact. I felt a little bit thought I can always go back and I always recommend the other people to go back. I felt special just for the sake. So the preparedness in the crisis will also have a positive impact on hotel operation. The hotels have been asked to install CCTV cameras, metal detectors, X-ray screen and all and bullets to experiences. Even the hotel employees have also provided have been provided with the training to fight in the crisis. Cost cutting during the crisis can be a wise decision to be in business during such a scenario. The major areas of cost cutting can be traced how like all the recruitment processes can be with help. Staffs can be set on vacations and volunteers can be asked for vacations. The hotel floors where guests have not been turned up, the electricity and water supply can be closed. It will be safe. Rather, it will serve electricity and thus efficiently manpower can be utilized. Crisis management teaches the lesson to survive within limited available resources. I hope this speaks very well of what happened in the COVID um, standing operating procedures where hotels were closed, happening in places were closed, schools and the like were also closed and major places. Swimming was banned, saunaing was banned, drinking alcohol was banned, and so persons who are invested in such ventures indeed needed to cut their court according to the cloth they had. Dealing with the disaster, the major concern of the hospitality industry is its service amenities, guest satisfaction, and earning profit by receiving and entertaining guests. The inner self ambience of the hotel may be enough to attract guests to the hotels, but the important question lies in this fact that whether the hotel building is strong enough to provide safety guard to those in-house, including their employees. The hotel's capability to fight against flood, the hurricane, and other natural disasters and extra weightage in the minds of the guests while looking for booking a room is Always in hand. A proper planning in this regard may save the lives of the valuable guests, money to be present on repairs and damages, and many potential litigations that may be confronted during the post disaster incidents. That means every hotel will need a lawyer then. The hotel's preparedness in advancing against disasters may ensure safety and security along with the help of guests not to face any terrific experience, not terrifying experience. The law also emphasizes that hotels should be liable for accidents that happen due to their negligence. So the hotels must ensure that they have ample evacuation plans and spaces. All exit gates are functioning without any impediments and exit door indicators are clearly visible and the hotel CCTV cameras are working and proper monitoring and recording is done. Have ample food staff, water and other resources available in the kitchen to be served during a disaster. The hotel administration can also offer free or discount accommodation to the victims, volunteers and relief workers. Imagine during COVID, the hotel had a client, it was fully booked, and all of a sudden they closed all movement. The whole of Kampala was quarantined. So that would mean you have guests who have been trapped, they want to leave, they so, and those are emergency cases. And even in the law of contract, there is that clause in the contract called the force 
ma joie. That the circumstances are beyond the control of the parties that enter into the contract. So what happens? The Water Administration should ensure that it has offered training to its employee to fight against disaster. The hotel staff must be competent enough to understand the situation and according to the course of action to be followed. So when the entire hotel, Mumbai was under threat attack, it was their staff members who brought guests to the safer places. It was done because the employees were able to sense the impact of such incidents and they focused only on providing safety and support to the guests calmly and without taking care of their own lives. The hotel administration must bind the employees into a team and communicate accordingly like the NBA should know who to report to and how to react when you deal against a disaster. Safety, security and travel documentation. The communication system of the hotel should be effective and be accessible to everybody. The hotel's website must display the latest information for notices pertaining to the disaster. The social media platforms should be used to update the latest happenings and progress to all the social, rather all stakeholders, including guests, community, and interested parties in the hotel. There should be provision of direct costing and other facilities also so that the fresh queries and doubts can be entertained. All the guests and employees need to be connected within a fraction of a moment if any disaster ever occurs. The hotel may also seek opinion from any restoration company regarding pre-loss assessment so that the hotel administration may purchase insurance against property and physical loss. As soon as the disaster is over and upon feeling that now it is safe to roam around, the hotel administration can take a look at the damages and it, instruct maintenance and engineering departments to take care of the repairs or replacements at the earliest moment possible. The rest of this, so that the resident guests do not visit, are not visited on the danger against the indicated map of the particular area. So the hotel administration will also make a file regarding the loss and damages caused due to disaster for the final insurance claim. After doing all these exercises, it is good to engage the staff members in cleaning up process. The hotel staff should be indulged for cutting the unnecessary trees and branches that are front down, removing debris, draining water from the logging areas, and draining it for further use. The cancelling session followed by a religious ritual before opening for booking can also be helpful in overcoming the trauma. So in trying to self-reflect, it's important for us to ask about the progress of where we are learning going forward. So these questions are good for you to reflect on, meditate on, discuss some of the guidelines followed by hoteliers regarding safety. The second question is, what are the major causes of fire in a hotel? And discuss the, the strategies adopted by a hotel to curb a fire from any of their premises. Now allow me to talk about, as I try to wind up, this will be my very last topic, I want to talk about the significance of safety and security. Safety and security is important for every individual because it ensures the well-being of their concerns. The more the people will be safe and secure, the more it will contribute to the society by or rather they giving their efforts or participating. Similarly, the organizations, the organizations rather, are also important so far as safety and security is concerned. If the organizations are safe, it ensures productivity for a longer time. The employees feel happy and safe and government receives revenue. The hotel organization also considered 
into the list of safety and security is important. The profit share of the hotels are based on the dynamic of the satisfied guests and satisfaction comes when the guests feel safe and secure. The other components of the services offered by hotels also contribute to guest satisfaction. But safety and security of the guests, employees, assets and reserves are highly recommended. After a terror strike in many parts of the world in recent past, targeting hotels became the talk of the town for many renowned hotel chains. The hotel became the soft targets as many people are gathered at a single place and the target against the crime such as terrorism threat, rather terrorism, theft, assault, murder are also solved. The hotel took the role of many safety and security service providers and received suggestions from me from army retired personnel coping up with potential hazard situations. The hotels installed many safety and security features to its premises to ensure nothing goes wrong against the guests. Property and hotel staff offer all these are the assets of the hotel that we bring value to the organization. Now to sum, it can be said that safety and security is a prime component that contributes into the mental satisfaction. If a tourist is aware that he is safe and secure, he she will enjoy the destination in a desired manner. The hotel safety and security is also important because it provides shelter to those persons who are new to the town. They prefer a place to stay because they need a place where they may feel safe and they are safe. By seeing the events of frequent terror strikes at hotels, hotels reviewed their safety and security mechanisms and upgraded the hotels with latest equipment and technologies that they found suitable for coming the situations. The hotels formulated policies in which they clearly mentioned that in-house training to the employees are a must so that they can be supportive and they can be supportive and during any emergency situations. They review their security features related to room safety, floor safety, emergency evacuation doors, exit and entry points for the guests and staff, and many more. The hotels also came out with their special security department and from little guidance by time to guests and their legal gates. And those of the hotel as well. It's a place, hotel equipment, hotel resources and family protection to be strictly followed by everyone that is to say the guests and hotel staff. The hotels also formulated action plans to fight against emergency situations created by man, men or nature. They formulated course of action to be taken in case of fire, death crisis and disaster. From the above discussions, it is clear that safety and security is important, is an important aspect in modern tourism and that is why it should not be as the hotels are in dollars into business and after all we are promoting destinations. Those must be safe and secure. Allow me to delve into a few um, definitions. Tourism, the motive which pursues a traveler to visit certain places. Safety, it has been defined as a condition in which a person is being protected from harm caused by unintentional failure. Security, it can be defined as a condition in which a person is being protected from harms caused due to intentional human behavior or actions. Hotel resources, the components that contribute into providing guest satisfaction. It includes all facilities offered by the hotel to recreate its guests. Emergency situation, the situation that cannot be predicted and can arise due to man man efforts or nature. Evacuation process, the procedure that is being followed by the guests with the help of the hotel staff to be at a safer place during an emergency situation. Thank you very much for giving me so much time.
to be able to say all of this. But the long and short of my presentation has been security, safety, disaster, and emergency situations. How do Bhutans react? Are they just being conditioned to react because of the situations? Sometimes not. There are policies and laws that require of them because these tours or guests are visitors of the country. So the country is coming up with enabling laws, enabling policies, enabling strategies to ensure that every visitor is safe. After all, a country like ours that is trying to promote itself as the last end mile tourist destination in East Africa or Africa. People will want to have hotel managers, managers of hospitality places, ensuring that all guests are safe and secure. And to that end, they will bring back all the revenue to construct our country and also meet all obligations of ensuring a country that is fully developed, that is responding to all youthful unemployment and thereby creates the needed capital for development. I say all this for God and my country and I owe you.